Hey, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID debunking video. So recently, Neil deGrasse Tyson went on to Dell Big Tree's show to debate him about vaccine topics. Most of you probably know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is. He's an astrophysicist and one of the most famous science communicators of today. But who is Dell Big Tree? Well, let me tell you. Dell Big Tree has been spreading disinformation about every vaccine for many, many years, and he does it in a televangelist-like way. I call him the Alex Jones of the anti-vaccine world. But just to give you a crystal clear picture of the kind of person Dell Big Tree is, he is the kind of person who does publicity stunts like this, where he wore a yellow Star of David at an anti-vaccine rally in order to compare himself as an anti-vaxxer to Jewish people in Nazi Germany. Yeah, the guy is a real piece of work. And we have Neil deGrasse Tyson, arguably the most famous science communicator of today, going on to his show to debate a topic that he is not an expert in. While I appreciate what Neil is trying to do and a lot of the things that he said here, ultimately I think that there are a lot of things that he should have done better. And so I'm going to be talking about in this video my opinion on how he should have approached a conversation like this, and also the facts that he definitely should have brought up to smack down Dell Big Tree's god awful claims that are so easily proven wrong, it's laughable. So let's jump right in and start with my opinion on how this should have been approached. As you can tell from Dell Big Tree's publicity sense, like the Yellow Star of David thing, he is not an honest person. He is not here to have an honest conversation. He is here to push an agenda, and that agenda is anti-vaccine rhetoric. He does not care about the facts. He does not care about the science. He cares about his image and the propaganda that his platform is putting out. So if you're going to go on his show to debate, which I do not recommend, I think that you need to be prepared. You have to know his talking points, and you have to be ready to address them. Neil should have been as prepared as possible to achieve the one goal that I think is really worth achieving in this kind of situation, and that is to show that his opponent, Del Bigtree, has absolutely no clue what he is talking about. Don't let him just rapid fire off nonsense. You have to nail him down to a specific claim, go through the evidence with him, make him explain the data that supports his claim, and then you will easily show that he is clueless, that he is making stuff up. By doing that, you're not going to change his mind. He's not going to admit defeat. No, and probably a lot of his most loyal followers will not either. But you will show an audience that this person pushing anti-vaccine propaganda had no idea what they were talking about. And that is worth doing in these kinds of debates. But I don't think Neil was prepared to do any of that. And so here I'm going to explain the kinds of things he should have said to Del Bigtree when he was rapid firing off some nonsense points. So this conversation was almost two hours long. I'm not going to cover the whole thing, but I'm going to start at the beginning and cover the highlights. So let's get started on that. Let's start with this clip that has gone viral where Neil and Dell are talking about scientific consensus around COVID vaccines. But before that clip that went viral, Neil actually explained what a scientific consensus was. So I think that's worth listening to. A scientific consensus is not about opinions. It's about results, published, peer-reviewed, published results of experiments. And we speak of the consensus of those experiments. Mm -hmm. If they lean in one direction, it is in your interest to, to lean follow with that it. direction. Correct. And I think for some of those quotes, I said, trust the scientist. Yeah. Yes, if the scientist is representing a consensus. If they're isolated, it's like, what's going on here? Here, Neil is absolutely right. A scientific consensus is based on the totality of the data. If you have an international community of scientists all studying a particular topic, they're all going to be making observations and doing experiments to answer particular questions in their field. And if all these different observations and experiments are all pointing in one direction, then that's a scientific consensus. And that consensus will only change if new and compelling data change that consensus. And the community will change with it. Scientists are perfectly capable of acknowledging new data and following it. What is not going to change a scientific consensus are a few lone cranks who go on national television to spout whatever flashy ideas that that news network wants to air at that time in order for ratings or clicks or whatever they want to achieve. 
but none of this gets through to Dell. Instead, Dell just does what science deniers always do. They prop up fake experts in order to create an illusion that the consensus is being sufficiently challenged by a radical, creative minority of scientists. And it's just not. Let's look at the list of people that he brings up in order to support his claim. So here's what we have. We have Peter, we have Peter McCullough, world-renowned heart doctor, saying, I am seeing a rise in myocarditis because of this vaccine. Peter McCullough has actually been stripped of his board certifications because of the nonsense he has been spreading about COVID-19. And for good reason. He's been spreading genuine COVID-19 nonsense the entire pandemic. I've made several videos featuring him and his bogus claims. But just to give you a quick idea of what kind of person he is, he now sells supplements that are supposed to treat myocarditis caused by COVID vaccines. But wait, there's more. Peter soon realized that most of his audience are anti-vaxxers and have not taken COVID vaccines. So, hmm, how is he going to sell more supplements to his audience that has not taken the thing that it is said to treat? Simple. Make up the idea that COVID vaccines can spread from person to person. Yep. He's on record saying that COVID vaccines shed from one person to another. How does mRNA, which does not replicate, jump from one person to another? It doesn't. He's just making things up. That's just fake expert number one. We have the leading ICU, second most published science, uh, Paul Merrick. I'm just, I, hear me out here. Hear me out. I know Go. you, I know, all right. Oh, I'm hearing you, Dell. And you're endorsing Paul Merrick, who still to this day thinks that ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine are effective treatments for COVID-19, despite several, several randomized controlled trials showing that neither of those medications do anything for COVID. That's fake expert number two. Dr. Robert Malone, part of the inventing factor behind the mRNA vaccine. All these people have been censored. They were shut down. They were kept from talking to the people in Washington. My boy Bobby Malone is not an inventor of mRNA anything. He did not do any of the work to make mRNA stable enough in the human body to act as a vaccine. He did not do any of the work to make the lipid nanoparticle component safer to use in humans. He didn't do any of that. I already made a video about Robert Malone's appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast, so if you want more details on him and his nonsense, I recommend you check that out. So yeah, that's fake expert number three, and I think you're getting the point. Also, none of these people were actually censored. In fact, they were really loud, and even today, they are still getting audiences in front of Congress. How is that censored? It's not. They put together the Great Barrington Declaration, which was an approach towards this to say, let's do protect that simple small group that we know needs to be protected and figure out a way the rest of us can establish a herd immunity around them. So yeah, here Dell is talking about the people on the right-hand side of that panel, like Dr. Sinatra Gupta, Jay Bhattacharya, Martin Kaldorf, authors of this Great Barrington Declaration, which was not a plan. It was simply a document saying, we don't need to close down the economy, just let her rip. Let COVID spread unabated across the population, and we'll figure out how to protect the vulnerable. We don't know how, but we'll figure it out. I mean, let's just think about this for a minute. The declaration offered no details on how to identify those who are vulnerable. Is a pregnant woman vulnerable? Yes. Is someone with asthma vulnerable? Yes. Someone with no obvious risk factors? Yeah they could still be at risk of COVID. Maybe not death, but there's also hospitalization, there's long COVID, things you don't want to happen to you. The second obvious problem here is even if you could identify everybody who was vulnerable to COVID, you're not going to protect them by just letting the virus spread across the communities. If an infectious virus is making it into families, workplaces, schools, daycares, you're not going to be protecting the vulnerable. They'll be at more risk because there's more community transmission. And even if you were able to, say, take the vulnerable and push them somewhere else, then they still have to re-enter society eventually. And whenever they do, the virus is still going to be there. Because this Great Barrington Declaration, if you went through with it, the virus would not go away. It would become endemic to a high degree. What I mean by that is essentially what we have seen with every infectious disease in the past that you essentially don't deal with. 
you get wave after wave of infection influenced by factors like immunity waning and introducing new immunologically naive people to the population that the virus can then colonize and spread around in. With vaccines, you obviously don't eliminate the virus. That was never claimed to be a goal of vaccines, but you reduce the death and the hospitalization and the actual impact on the healthcare system that the virus causes. That's kind of the whole point. And with the Great Barrington Declaration, you obviously would also have a lot of infections, but you have a lot more death. And we want to prevent death, right? Yeah, that seems like a good goal. Great Barrington Declaration didn't want to do that. So of course it was ignored and smacked down by scientists. It's like if you're at a work meeting and someone says, hey, how about we take all that money that we're going to give our employees for bonuses and instead invest it into waffles, invest it into lots and lots of waffles. You're going to say, no, that's dumb. It's just one of those ideas that had absolutely no basis in reality. So they didn't really go far in the scientific community. And then the people like Paul Dorf and Bhattacharya got upset when their ideas were not accepted by their peers. And by the way, all the scientists I just showed proved to be right. They told you that this virus, that the vaccine would not end this and, and would actually cause an endemic because you've now made people that cannot clear this virus and kill it. They're all asymptomatic carriers. That's all this vaccine keeps doing. So now we're getting into some of the claims that Neil could have smacked down very easily with some evidence. What Dell just said there is stupid. We have plenty of data showing that when you're vaccinated against SARS-CoV-2 and then you get infected, you are going to clear the virus faster than someone who is unvaccinated. This is thanks to an immune memory response that kicks in, produces antibodies and immune cells that are going to neutralize and clear the virus, and in the process make you less likely to actually get sick or die. And that is really the whole point of vaccines, and that's what they have done here. The study that needs to be done is a comparative study. You could throw your measles and the safety of measles and whether it causes autism studies on the table, and I could show very robust studies that show the exact opposite. You wouldn't show a consensus. Uh, huh? You wouldn't show a consensus. I don't care about the you consensus. Have to. Oh yeah, did I mention that Del Bigtree thinks that vaccines cause autism? Because he thinks that vaccines cause autism. And Neil is absolutely right there. Dell could show a absolute garbage tier study showing that maybe there's an association between autism and vaccines, but it would not represent a consensus because we have several well-designed, huge investigative trials showing that vaccines convincingly do not cause autism. And then Dell's response is oh so appropriate that he doesn't care about the consensus. Of course he doesn't. He only cares about his propaganda, like I said. He is not interested in science. He's not interested in the facts. All he cares about is pushing his predetermined message. That's all. CDC sits on a database called the VSD. Yep. Has nearly 10 million people in it. Their personal identification is scrubbed. It's where all the studies are done. The Institute of Medicine studied that, that data set and said that you have tens of thousands of unvaccinated individuals in there. You could do a very powerful, statistically powerful study comparing the vaccinated to the completely unvaccinated. So, but and ask simple questions. Write the proposal to do it. We have. Okay. NIH denies us. My guy. If you look on that very page, there's a link. If you click that link, you can find a long list of studies throughout the years that have been done using that data set. And one of the more recent ones is looking at all-cause mortality in COVID vaccinated versus COVID unvaccinated individuals. And guess what? COVID vaccinated individuals have a lower all-cause mortality rate than unvaccinated individuals. In other words, unvaccinated individuals die more often than vaccinated individuals. Dell might not be able to read, but at least he entertains us. What what I think we have shown here is that this is nice and cold. It is nice and cold. Oh my goodness, it's like 33 degrees. We are not some radical group of people. We have we are trying to stand for the small guy, the little guy, the part that's being left out of the consensus. It looks to me like Neil is just totally done with Dell here, and I don't blame him. Dell, you are a radical group of wackos. You are not fighting for the little guy. You're fighting for the opposite. You are fighting for policies that are ultimately going to harm the little guy the most. You don't truly fight for vaccine victims. 
you parade them as trophies in your propaganda campaign. You don't truly fight for safer vaccines, you ignore science and fight against vaccines, period. You fight against evidence-based public health policies, you fight against saving lives. It's despicable, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Your nonsense Dell is so easy to debunk, all it took was clicking on a link in your own darn screenshot. Now, as a viewer, you're probably wondering, would I debate Dell Big Tree? Yes, I would. Not on his platform, though. I wouldn't go on his show where he controls the narrative and the context of whatever is said. No, I'll debate him happily on a neutral platform where I know the format, and we can agree on predetermined topics to discuss. And that's what I would recommend to any other scientist who might be interested in debating someone like Del Bigtree. That includes your friends, Neil. Give them this advice. And if you want a more fleshed out version of this kind of advice, I recommend you read Dr. David Gorsky's article on this episode of Del Bigtree's show. I'll put the link to that as well as all of the other science that I talked about in this video in the description below so that you can actually, you know, read the science and be smarter than Del Bigtree, which is not hard, I promise. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week's video. Like I said, the links are in the description if you want to read more science. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like it and subscribe so that you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.